Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation, our first major conversation today, is going to be discussing urban development and fiscal planning here in Lagos. The challenges, what more needs to be done, and where we currently are. We've uh, been joined this morning in the studio uh, by a former commissioner for fiscal planning and urban development here in Lagos. He's uh, now the national president, Nigerian Institute of Town uh, Planners. Good morning to Mr. Olutoyi Olutoy Ayinde. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, viewers. All right, so it's, um, it's a conversation that a lot of people don't you know, always have because we have a maybe skewed understanding concerning urban development and what fiscal planning really should be in a state. So let's start with understanding, you know, from your time, you know, as a commissioner and uh, where you currently are, what is urban development? What is fiscal planning, you know, with regards to Lagos state? Okay, I, I think it would be good for us to, to put it in the right sequence. It should be planning before development. And that's why in Lagos state it's called the Ministry of Fiscal Planning and urban right. development, because you plan first before you develop. And what is planning really about, when we talk about fiscal planning, is, is about putting order into the land uses within a human settlement system. So when you say it's human settlement, that it can start from a village to a city, to a state, to a nation. So uh, we are meant to first plan before we develop. The plan is actually the blueprint, and that's what you follow eventually. Now, this sequence between planning and development is, is akin to the sequence between thinking and speaking. You, you will understand yes. that as a media person. You think first before you speak. You don't speak and then try to think about what you spoke. So you think before you speak, and, and it's so important that the good book says that do you see a man who speaks without thinking? He says there's more hope for a fool than for him. So it's, it's, it's like say, do, do you see somebody who develops without planning? There's also more hope for a fool than for that person because every development that comes without planning for it usually ends in chaos. So when you come to Lagos, you find that Lagos... Uh, but by the way, I, I've been doing a, a nationwide tour as national president of the Nigerian Institute of Town Planners to assess the state of fiscal planning in Nigeria. And uh, of 17 states that I've visited, Lagos still stands far ahead of others because it's, it's, the, it's a state that has produced the highest number of fiscal development plans. There were those that were initiated before I became uh, commissioner in 2011. I served 2011 to 2015, which were completed during my tenure. There were those that were started during my tenure and completed. Uh, there are those that were also started and other, uh, other uh, administrations have come to, to complete. And, and right now, the state is still, still doing more. But let me say that the, the challenge Lagos State is having is that of... Um, the explosive population, you, you know, which tends to even uh, test those plans that it has because uh, there are people who come into Lagos almost every, every minute, day. you know, and uh, it says about 100 come in every minute and more than 80% don't go back, you know. So, uh, and that's probably why people are asking for a special status for Lagos because it requires funding to prepare plans. It requires funding to implement plans. In fact, if you prepare plans and you do not implement them, you are, you are probably on the same level as a person who didn't, who didn't prepare any at all. So that, that's, the, that's the position. Then again, when these plans are prepared, you know, there are, are what you call details. So some plans are global they need to be brought down to the level of the details. This is a studio. This is a detailed design of the studio. If somebody just took out this room alone and brought the details out and showed someone outside that, oh, this is the, this is the detail of a studio, the person will ask, where, okay, where is this studio located? Then he will want to say, oh, it's in one building on 13A. 
Kayode Abraham. And then somebody wants to say, where is Kayode Abraham? Uh, you see another map that says oh, it's in Victoria Island. Okay, where is Victoria Island? Yes. Victoria Island is part of Lagos metropolitan area. Oh, where is Lagos metropolitan area? Lagos metropolitan area is part of Lagos State. Where is Lagos State? Lagos State is part of Nigeria. So that's how plans come from the general to the specific. So there are some plans that need to be taken down to the very details in Lagos State. And when you get to those details, those plans get in the hands of individuals that make it possible for the individual to challenge another person who is trying to do contrary. Okay. To um, plan. So would you say that the, the Lagos Development Plan has been all-inclusive from, from what you've seen? Um, and where would you say it has lacked? Because over time, every now and then we hear of a, a demolition someplace, you know, chasing, you know, a certain you know, class of people, you know, to move to a totally different place. Uh, we hear of developments, you know, of, um, of um, uh, the Babbage area now, which, for example, is now being turned into something totally different. Um, so are these all initial, you know, plans of what Lagos should have been like, or are these knee-jerk um, you know, changes. No, let, let, let's not forget that as far back as 1980, there was a, there was a Lagos State Regional Plan and then a Lagos State, a Lagos Metropolitan Master Plan. And uh, these plans already uh, highlighted in, in, in general terms what should be happening in each area of Lagos. So when you see clusters of, uh, of informal settlements or what look like ungoverned spaces. Those are not things that were part of the plans. But like I said earlier, the influx of population into Lagos goes beyond the resources that Lagos State itself can even cope with. And, and you know, as, as these people come in, uh, Lagos doesn't give visas to the people, so you can't tell people that they cannot come in. They look for the, the most vulnerable places. They look for the wetlands and, you know, places that they think, oh, oh because nobody's using them now, we can get there. But every one of these things has a plan. For example, there's supposed to be a coastal road running parallel to the... Uh, to the Atlantic Ocean. It's been coming, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a West African uh, route that has been coming from Ghana, Togo, Republic of Benin, it's supposed to pass through here to Cameroon. So the truth is that when, when the right of ways for those, those uh, for roads like that are needed, then the government will still go out to claim them because those who are staying there are staying there illegally and nobody actually approved those settlements there. So that's what, that's the experience Lagos is having. Okay, I want you to help us break this down for the ordinary man on the street who needs to truly understand what is the plan to develop Lagos State? Now, um, the way you develop a state, uh, it's, it's, in two, it's in two ways, and that's the nexus. There's the economic development plan, and there's a fiscal development plan. And the truth is that anything you plan economically is reflected on ground. So every, every major area of Lagos has its development plan. The Victoria Island that we are now has a development plan. It was reviewed when I was in office, so it's still, it's still current. And it, 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 there's, there's a lucky master plan. I want us to take um, a particular area. Let's say Ajigunle, for instance. Yes. You know, one of these, these areas in Lagos. Mm -hmm. um, what, what would you say is the development plan for places like that, the suburbs, the rural areas like that in Lagos? Ajigunle will fall between the Badagre area master plan and their Papa area uh, model city plan. There, there are plans. There are plans there which are existing and uh, when you have plans it talks of the areas where the residential areas are supposed to be areas where the commercial the industrial and then the routine system all of those things are there you know so they are already there i think what we do not have now is for every individual 
to know about them. Because they are also available for sale. Those plans are printed and are being sold by the Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development. So maybe this is the right time to tell people that the master plans of the various areas are available for sale at the Ministry of Fiscal Planning and Urban Development. So if you really want to know what your area is about, you can get the, you can get the, the information May we from know the, the cost? master plan. I'm not in government now, so I don't know the cost, okay. but I, I think I think I think a copy of uh, uh, the mainland model city plan, for example, is about ten thousand naira because it's a, it's a bulky it's a bulky document. So we don't have an online version that people can download for free and read. I think for some of them they do. I can't tell you offhand, okay. but I, I recall that uh, Badagri is online um, lucky is online uh, if you go to the website of the ministry of fiscal planning and urban development you should okay. be able to get all it right. yeah uh, all right I, I want us to then talk um about um challenges that have existed um and um one of them of course for a lot of uh, Lagos Lagosians has uh, been uh, flooding drainages you know and, and uh, the inadequacy of those drainage systems to sort out flooding. Um, I remember someone mentioned uh, you know, that every now and then flash floods happen and so you know, people just have to you know, understand that that's you know, a possibility and you know, deal with it. Um, but do you, would you say that Lagos has failed with you know, sticking with its original blueprint um, with regards to building and development and that's one of the reasons we continue to see flooding in certain parts of Lagos whenever it rains? No, we can't assume the failure of Lagos right now as, it, as we speak. Uh, first is that you should realize the, the, the changes we're experiencing globally yes. in terms of climate change. So the oceans are rising, the sea levels are rising. Uh, this just adds more to what is happening in Lagos. It, Lagos is a, literal, is a literal state. It's low-lying uh, and therefore requires some, some care. And then it, it also requires that our, our channels are kept clean most of the time. Uh, and also that, that people do not encroach. So what we have seen over time is that it's those areas close to the waterways, the wetlands, that many of those who, who come in as, as quarters, that's where they settle. And we have seen people who are building within the right of ways of channels. And um, let me also say that I'm aware that um, the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources is also making efforts to, to clear those things. But um, we should understand that if we're able to keep, you see, there, there are natural drainage facilities. There are the lagoon, the rivers, the streams. When we maintain the right level of development, because what has often happened is that people do not understand that there is a technique to development. You know, everybody thinks they know about construction, mm -hmm. but there there are invert levels for drainages. So when 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 there is a drainage here and there is a road here, the the technique is that your development must always be higher than your road system so that your development can drain. But we have seen on many occasions where people build lower than the road system. So their, their site can never drain into the, 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 the drainage system. And we, we also find cases where, where the drains are made after development has come. You know, and uh, it's, it makes it makes the, the structures there lower. So those are things that we find, and there are challenges that I believe can be can, can 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 be overcome. So we know that you know there's been a huge influx of people into Lagos in the past few years, and as the population of Lagos keep rising, what do you think the effect would be on the fiscal planning of the state and development? We must begin to change our concept of development. Um, I was with the governor 
last week and I was saying that, and I've said this generally in Nigeria, the, we have a fixed land resource, but our population is increasing and that's not about Lagos alone. In 1971, my teacher taught me in my first year in secondary school that the territory in Nigeria was occupied by 56 million people. Then we still had Bakasi. Now we don't have Bakasi. It means that we have less land. Now we don't have Lake Chad. It means that we have less resource. Now desertification has crept in. So we still have less land. But what do the UN projections say of our population now? 211 million plus. In a few years' time, this population because we are not controlling our population and because every one of us wants to reproduce and see our children's children, this population will become 300, will become 400 and on a fixed resource. So it will be like putting a piece of bone before a dog. When it's one piece of bone to a dog, there will be no problem. If you put the same piece of bone between two dogs, there will be a barking and a snarling. If you put that same piece of bone in the midst of 50 dogs, it will not be barking, it will not be snarling, it will be war yeah. because they will fight. So if you translate that into our fixed land resource and our increasing population, you should be able to rationalize what the cost is for intercommunal clashes that we have now. You notice that some communities had lived for centuries together with no fight, but now they fight. There is, there is an intercommunal clash between a community in Kogi and Anambra. There, there is one between some communities in, uh, in Kwara in State, River, the Bonya, yeah. Yeah. Or everywhere. And all they are clashing on is on land, not on anything else. So there is, in, in developed countries, in, people, in places that make progress, they don't allocate land to individuals for development. So you don't get to see someone in UK going to the market to go and buy cement, to go and buy iron rods. Why? Because he wants to provide his own house. Planning truly answers to governance. It answers to good governance. And where good governance has established public housing policy, you see corporations, you see governments like council, you see cooperatives building condominiums for citizens to access. So that's one aspect of management of our land use that we must come to. We must come to realize that we can't all be building our plots because as we are allocating plots, we are actually spreading, spreading on our Greek land. And the more our Greek land we reduce, we increase food insecurity. The more we spread, we get on wetlands, we increase the incidence of flooding. The more we expand, we get on lands meant for conservation. It's not all our land we're supposed to develop. We're supposed to have land for conservation because the environment itself has to breathe. Yeah. Breathe in the sense of the smoke that we emit from our kitchens, the smoke that comes from the exhaust of automobiles. If we don't provide that land for conservation, the open spaces, all those smokes get back at us and then it also threatens our health and reduces our life expectancy. So it's all wrapped up in how we are able to manage our land resources. That's exactly oh, is my oh, question, Mr. Yes. Inde. What's the plan for Lagos to manage our use of land as the population grows? Is it that, you know, you've mentioned that in other parts of the world about, you know, houses and planning, it's a government responsibility. Unlike here in Lagos, where you save up your money to buy your own land. Unlike your own here house. in Nigeria. Exactly. So what's the plan <laughs> to fix that at our population ex explode? Does the government plan to now buy back these lands from private individuals later and build condominiums, like you've said? What exactly is the plan? I, I think it's a conversation that we need to take further. Uh, first, to get government involved. But without serving in government now, I can tell you that one of the challenges we have is what they call our culture. Because we have been made, many Nigerians have been made to believe that you have to have your own house. And the only way to have your own house is to get your own land. 
fine. There's nothing wrong with having your own place to live, an apartment. But must you have a land? So we must address our culture that thinks you must get land. So, and if you have address our culture, you must start from the grassroots, talking to people. And that's why part of my, my nationwide tour uh, includes traditional rulers, people who are leaders of thought. We can't, government can't just decide that, okay, from now we build condominiums. You will see people who will kick because they don't understand. They will say, oh, you already built your own house. You don't want me to build mine. You know, so there are things we must do. We we'll probably have to learn from what nations like Singapore did. Singapore was building like we were doing until they decided because there was a policy that no Singaporean must be homeless. They collapsed all those things and began to build condominiums. We, 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 we made... There's a, there's a model in Lagos State when I was in government. I actually met it, but it was taken to about 85% completion when I was in office. We call the project the Salegonga Project, where 11 families pulled their plots together. Small plots, tiny plots, but by the time, yeah, 11 families. By the time they pulled them together, we put in, in place a 13 floor project with 48 dwelling units, uh, such that each of those families can get their shares back and then the rest will be available for sale. But it took time to talk to those families for them to agree. So that's, that's the model that Lagos and other governments must begin to look at again and see how we can sell it to the people because the people must have a buy-in so that... And that's, so we need and basically lots of high-rise buildings yeah. then. Yeah, yes, yes. Well, um, good thing that you also mentioned uh, the conservation, you know, aspect, which I, which I think is very important. You know, over time, it seems that we have lost a lot of nature, lost a lot of trees, lost a lot of, you know, waters, mm -hmm. and some of all of that. So I hope we can get back to that. But one of the things that I had asked before was whether the Lagos plan is all inclusive for the poor, for those who can't afford these, uh, you know, uh, uh, structures that you've just mentioned. Um, and of course, there's an increasing number of those people in, in, in different parts of Lagos. Um, so does Lagos have a plan to accommodate those people um, somehow, some way? Well, Lagos has a plan for inclusiveness. Uh, you discover that every plan, every master plan that is being done takes, takes the consultants who are involved, takes the government to the grassroots to go and talk to them. But uh, we're not going to achieve many of these things overnight. They will come gradually. Uh, I've seen, uh, I know, not even seen, I know of consultants who have been awarded some projects and they have been to the grassroots talking to them, asking for their needs and things like that. And these are, these are the steps to take for, for inclusiveness. Well, um, I, I think um, I want to make this conversation more focused regarding inclusiveness for the poor. There are lots of newspaper headlines Lagos government demolishes shanties on Lekki Coastal Road. Lagos demolishes. So it's a lot. So when you go on social media, you hear the, the pain of people, how, you know, maybe they're living in one shanty somewhere and then it was demolished. So what really is the plan? As Lagos, you know, develops, as Lagos expands, you know, I, I mean, as the government begins to expand her urban planning and development, um, what is really is the plan for people who can't afford these high-rise buildings we're talking about? Are they just, are their houses just demolished and they're rendered homeless? What's the plan for them? Okay, let, let, let's first understand the, the basics of living in an environment. Uh, to build a house, you first find out that it's the right place to build in. When you know it's the right place, then you ask for a building permit. Uh, so when you do not first ensure that it's the right place to build, when you do not get a permit, it first means that what you have is an illegal development. So if it's, if it's left to thrive, that's encouraging illegality. So there is, there's going to be a time that that development for which that place is reserved has to take place. If it doesn't take place, then you are also depriving the, uh, the larger society from benefiting. What we need is constant engagement with the people so that people don't build where they are not supposed to. Because if people build, if you build on my land, for example, the day I need it, I will clear it. If it's my land, 
and I have the document. And that's what people just see some places and they think, oh, nobody is looking. Let me stay there. That's, that's not the way it is done. You ensure that it's a place that is conducive. It's a place where it is allowed. And then there are processes. So I think we must just increase the information to the people. Government must increase its public enlightenment. That's the only way we will solve Mr. it. Mr. Inde, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Some of these chances actually need to be demolished because they're illegal. Mm. My, my question is, what then happens to the people? Does the government have a compensation plan for them? What happens to it, the people who then... don't compensate illegality. Hmm. Because if you compensate illegality, then the person can also go somewhere else. The person you tell that this is not the right place to build can actually go to another place that is not the right so place So they are rendered build. homeless and nowhere no, to you, go? No, you are, you, are, you are looking at it only from one side. No, I, I see I both think, sides. I think, no, I think but you does the government to, have a plan for the people whose houses then get demolished what, because What they're usually illegal? happens, yes. let, let, let me say this. Okay. Anytime you develop illegally, you have chosen to take a risk. Hmm. So what government does is that it doesn't come overnight to tell you to move. Government gives you time to move. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, a, demolition, I'll tell you a demolition that happened when I was in government, and nobody even heard about it. The Adeni Diadeli section were planning to reconstruct, and then we had this visit with the governor, where one of the residents actually told the governor then that, I'm sorry, Your Excellency, we don't trust government. And then we knew that we had to engage. And by the time we engaged and told them the plans of government, when it will happen, the options that they had, they took their various options. And by the time they moved out, the government came in and demolished. So for every for every settlement that is illegal, government gives notices. How long? There are, there are, there are various kinds of notices. There are seven days notice. Wow. Yeah. Because it's illegal. Look, if, if they had permission, if they had permit to build, it would probably take longer. For example, when government wants to expand roads, and it's going to affect structures. It doesn't come in seven days because most of those structures have fences that need to they be have approvals. Yeah. So the first thing they ask is please submit all of your documents to to the Ministry of Fiscal Planning. Okay. Oh, and once you have an approval, if the expansion affects your property, there's measurement, there's compensation. Why? Because there is a, 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 an approval to build. So you are compensating because there is a legal development. Okay, so Lagos State Government, basically mm. what you're saying, Lagos State Government only gives compensation um, to people who actually got permits in the first place to build, because and then the government the now one. needs to use that particular area. Yes. Okay, we understand right. that um, um, let's quickly talk challenges before we go. Um, you know, what would you describe as the biggest challenges with regards to um, achieving you know, the development plan of uh, Lagos State? The, the greatest uh, challenge is, is, is resources. It's resources. And uh, I saw uh, while you were having your uh, the press. newspaper review, yes. I saw the issue of VAT. <laughs> and I was saying to myself, I wish Lagos State can be getting all of its VAT. Well, they have, they know, have an so, opportunity now. So, so, be, so because, because development requires funding. Preparation of plans requires funding. And that's what Lagos needs. And you know that Lagos is attracting a population more than it can take cater for. So that's the greatest challenge. It's, it's not, uh, I recollect when we were in government, uh, Governor Fashola used to say that this is not the best time to be in government. When I look at the people now, I, I have sympathy for them. I think we were in a better time then. Hmm. Because now... It's getting worse, basically. We were looking at about 17 million population. They are looking at over 22 million population. Yes. And the resources are not increasing. The resources are less. And we have more population. So it's the greatest challenge that Lagos State has now. Mm. And you can see with the number of cars on the road, the traffic, um, it's, it's so much. Yeah. Um, I, I also want to talk about 
where you foresee Lagos in another 10 years? Because I believe that these are part of the plans. These plans have, you know, 10 year, 15 year. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. 20 uh, years. The minimum is yeah. 20 years. All things being equal, we should have a better Lagos than now. Um, the blue line is there. It hasn't been completed. I'm sure within the next 10 years that will have been completed and then it can take can take traffic, can take commuters from the Badagri axis uh, to Marina seamlessly. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that the red line will have, will have taken off. We're hoping that there will have been uh, a ramp up on the water transportation system. So, and um, if we also consider the trend now, you know, quite a number of offices now uh, are working from home. Yes. It keeps less people on the road. So we're likely to have a more free flowing traffic. And um, once public transportation has improved, there will be less need for individuals to put their own vehicles on the road. Mm. And we're believing, I know that when we were in government, we were trying to mop up all the mini buses because there are quite a number of them. And when you have um, larger buses, uh, that contain more passengers, and then you have the the rail lines working. They will we'll have freer routes. Oh, oh. So thank it, you. Obviously, there's a lot of work uh, that needs to be done, and this mm. also includes security because I've also seen uh, people, you know, create the advantages of a better public transportation system and how it reduces the number of cars on the road and yeah. reduces the stress that it also um, causes on the road. But thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Olutoyi Ainde, the National President of the Nigerian Institute of Town Planners and the former Commissioner of the Fiscal and Planning and Urban Development in Lagos State. Um, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, thank you for the privilege. So up next on The Breakfast, we're talking about gas flaring and its implications on the Nigerian economy. Um, do stay with us.